Economists say South Africans should brace themselves for more job losses and an even tougher struggle to find jobs and a higher cost of living. These are just some of the effects of the recession which was confirmed yesterday. Economist Professor Tandika Mkandawire says the financial sector in South Africa is too powerful and it will be detrimental to the economy if other tools are not deployed to avert recessions in the future. Mkandawire spoke exclusively to SABC News in Johannesburg on issues including the recession and the land question. The growth rates in Africa have slowed down. Now it's about 4% and so forth. Granted, South Africa is still way ahead in terms of per capita income, but it's, 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 it's uh, not good for South Africa to be growing less than 4%. Okay? Um, and I think that South Africa has yet to find the model of development of South Africa. Um, you know, we, you had the, the apartheid model, which was very specific. You know, it, it, it aligned itself. Cheap labor, which they acquired by force and by immigration, the state had a lot of control over the banking system. It definitely had control in also on the, how the surplus from the mining industry were used, and it, some of that money was used to, to industrialize South Africa. There was a logic to the apartheid model, a deadly logic, if you like, for, for black people. But for them, it worked. You know, it worked. Uh, we then liberalized. You know, when you know, we liberalized everything, and the liberal, liberalization is not a development model. It's at best a stabilization model. You stabilize the economy and maybe induce some efficiencies here and there, but it's not a developmental model. And so South Africa is stuck with that. They, so they, have, they really have to work on finding a developmental model which involves mobilizing your resources, domestic resources, mobilizing your labor force, uh, having some kind of pact, social pacts or alliances between the state and the private sector. You know, uh, those are, you know, uh, and, and give and the state having instruments of, of leverage uh, over over capital, which they, you know, right now the state does not have. You know. The government has been criticised for um, taking just one tool and thinking that it will, for instance, uh, inflation targeting and thinking that. Well, that's too narrow. Yeah. Yeah. South Africa's one of the, <laughs> I think, South Africa's headache. The, its financial sector is too big for the economy and and, and receives too much attention. Okay. Um, and and the, the I, I was here in South Africa when there was a when there was a demonstration against you know when when there was, was these changes of ministers and there were some wrong minister was chosen and there was a demonstration which was largely whites who demonstrated against that and in that in the in the, the business daily had an article two articles you know what article on second second page the first one was about the strike and the second one was about um, the, 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 no, the, sorry, the first page one was about strike and the fall of the rand. I think. The second page had an article about increase of exports of South Africa because of the fall of the rand. I think. So the same phenomenon was seen within the same newspaper, two different stories. One is bad, it's declining. The other one is, you know, is, is good because it's having exports. But so the first one was probably what the financial sector wanted to hear. Maybe the export sector wanted to hear the second story. You know? The point that the financial sector in this country, the, its voice is much bigger than, you know, than it should be. You know, it should be you know? And that's what makes the South African government spend so much time looking you know, over the shoulder whether the financial sector is happy or not. You know? and, uh, and unfortunately, the way it is now, it matters, yes. And so you have to listen to the financial sector all the time. In the issue of land in South Africa, President Donald Trump has his views. South Africa has said they are unfortunate because they were misinformed. But of course, a shot in the arm for the country from UK Prime Minister Theresa May, who said she is confident that the country can handle it. Now, when you look at the issue of land for South Africa, is it a big issue that the country should be looking at and how should it be doing it to ensure that it turns the economy? Only South Africans can answer that question, but it's, it's, it's a choice. You're choosing to redress a certain injustice. You can choose, like other countries in Africa, not to address it. Usually, history can pose certain challenges to your people, and if you don't resolve them, they'll just pile up. Uh, in 1980, it was obvious the Zimbabwe policy on land was going to explode. The government was doing everything to postpone it, you know, and they were being cheered for being smart, and, you know, Gabi was even knighted by the British because he was a conciliatory and all that. 
but the thing was building up. So politically, if South Africans, it is South to decide whether in fact this thing is building up and it can blow up in our faces. Uh, I don't believe with extreme forms of inequality in South Africa, this economy can grow much. I don't think it can. Uh, politically, it's not sustainable to have such you know, the incredible inequalities. And mind you, the land issue is not a, a, a countryside issue. The inequality of access to land in, Af in South Africa is the most conspicuous actually in the urban areas. One group, few, is sitting on a vast amount of land with big gardens and all that, you know. And then the others were crushed in a little, you know. And so we, we have to see that the land issue is not people getting a land to farm on. But people say, ah, oh, but that's not like Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yes, but not here. Yes, yeah, true, but here the land inequality actually manifests itself most uh, shamefully, I think, in the urban areas. And, and, and again, for the sake of your own development, this kind of ge the geography of South African uh, urbanization is very difficult. You know, the workers are very far from their workplace, you know, and there are a lot of small things. You put Kailisha so far, they can't even, just looking for a job. It would take you, you know, it would take all your, your national, your daily income. So it's, it's, there's something wrong with the structure, of the apartheid structure, and that has to be addressed for South Africa. And one of the issues you have, you may have to address, I think you will have to address, is the land issue. You know, the land issue.